Hi there, Comedy Addict here. This is my first tutorial on GSAC. Today we're going to cover setting up your user information, setting up your GPS model, downloading caches, and then installing caches onto your GPS. To me, these are the most useful features we're going to be using GSAC for. So the first thing we're going to do is set up your user information. So go to geocaching.com access and go down to get another token. This is where you will enter your geocaching user information. And then check the keep sign in box. And then allow access. So the final step now for setting up your user information is to go up to geocaching.com access and down to update user information. From there click OK. This updates your home coordinates as well as your geocaching ID. Okay, so the next step is to set up your GPS model. So go up to GPS and then Setup. You will see they have all the major brands, Garmin, Delorme, Lawrence, Magellan. Browse through until you find your particular model. When you have found your particular GPS, click OK and you're done. And so that concludes the setup part. You should hopefully never have to do those again unless you move or change your GPS. And so now we're going to do the fun stuff, actually downloading the caches to your GPS. Okay, so for this tutorial, we're going to assume that you already have a pod query to run. But if not, let's go into geocaching and we'll set one up to run. So for example, I'll click today, which is Thursday, and click Napanee, and we'll run that for today. And just like that, it's now run and ready for us to use. So let's go back into GSAC and then go up to geocaching.com access and then download pocket queries. This will give you a list of any pocket queries that are ready to run. Put a check mark next to the ones you want and then go to OK. It will then download the pocket queries and after for anywhere from a few seconds to a minute or so, we'll then insert the caches into GSAC, just like what it's doing now. This may take a while if you have lots of caches, or an older computer, or somewhat slower internet. But once it is finished, you will then get a summary screen like this. Click OK when you're ready. And then return to the main screen, which lists all the caches you've just downloaded. Now I'm going to show you another method of downloading caches. If you go to geocaching.com access and click on Get Geocaches, you'll then see this screen that has a lot of information on it. For the most part, we're only going to deal with the circle and the rectangle options. You might want to pause this in a second just to take a look at exactly what's on this page. As all the options from maximum geocaches and down apply to both these two options. For this video, I'm only going to show you one option. So click on rectangle and then go to Google Map. You will then see a map of your area with a purple rectangle roughly over your home location. You can then drag this to wherever you need. So let's say you're caching in a different city, move it to that city. Or you can enlarge it or make it smaller based on, again, where you want to cache for the day. When you're happy with the location and the size of the rectangle, then click on Return Coordinates. You can now also choose to exclude certain caches. For example, if you don't want mysteries or multis, you can do so on this screen here. 
and then click OK. It will then process and then start downloading the caches you have selected. Again, this may take a couple minutes depending on your computer speed and how many caches are in the area. Once you get to the summary screen, just click OK once again. And this will take you back to the main screen with all the caches listed once again. Okay, at this point, you are now ready to send the caches to your GPS. But before we do that, I'm going to show you one more quick feature. Okay, if you look down where I'm pointing, you will see a yellow, a white, a pink, and a green square. The yellow is for found caches, the white is for unfound, the pink is for disabled or archived, and the green is for owned caches. By double clicking on one of them, for example, the green one, you can then select all caches that you own which happen to made it through in your pocket query. From there, you can delete one or all of them just by pressing the delete key. You can then go through and do with all the particular things, whether it's found or owned or disabled or archived. Okay, we are now ready to send your caches to your GPS. So we're just going to double check to make sure you have the right settings on your GPS. Let's so go up to the GPS in the menu and then go down to setup. When you've confirmed that this is the right GPS, click OK. When you're happy you have the right settings, then go up to GPS and go to Send Waypoints. You may see different options here, depending on your model of GPS. For most people, the default settings is fine, but you may want to change it to include more logs or to clear the GPS. Be careful, as that may delete waypoints that you've marked for new caches you're working on, or so I've heard. And assuming your GPS is now plugged in and ready to go, click on the send button. It will then process, which will take a few seconds, and then send the caches to your GPS using the USB cable. When the message disappears, the caches have been transferred to your GPS, and you're done. You're now ready to go outside and go caching. This is the end of this video. In the next one, I'll show you how to actually log your cache finds using GSAC. If you liked the video and found it useful, why not like it? And while you're at it, why not subscribe and receive all the new videos when they come out? Thanks for viewing. Happy caching.